Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit Organization. Doing a rare evening shoot here because this is take two of our weekly update blog number 38, covering our progress for the week of November 11th, 2013. We're reshooting this blog because the daytime shoot turned out to have audio syncing issues that experiences taught us uh, are easy to just do over versus trying to fix. And so here we are, doing this blog the second time. Uh, the purpose of our organization is to implement global transformation. We are here to create positive and permanent global change for everyone and everything living on this planet within our generation. And our path to doing that is through open source tools, tutorials, resources, and blueprints for solutions that address every aspect of society. Everything from food, housing, and energy to education, recreation, for-profit, non-profit business models, true earth stewardship, and a whole lot more. And the reason why we're addressing everything simultaneously is because we can. We've gotten to a point, in our opinion, in this world that uh, we have virtually limited, unlimited access to information now thanks to the internet and uh, the ability to reach out to a global population and find the people that realize that we can create a world that works for everybody, that the resources exist on this planet, that the technology and the knowledge exists on this planet, and the desire, the willpower exists right now in enough of us to come together as a group of people that want to truly change the world and make a difference and do it. And so we are being the change that we want to see in the world. And we're addressing everything uh, comprehensively and simultaneously because we see all of these things as interconnected and interdependent. And it is our opinion as an organization that to address just one piece without looking at all of the other pieces of the puzzle as connected to that one piece is really just putting a bandage on the problem versus creating a true solution. And so we have spent years putting together a comprehensive and complete solution that addresses everything simultaneously. And we call it the solution to everything because it really, really is a model that in its pieces addresses things separately. And when put together, creates an environment, a living environment that most people will consider far superior than what they're experiencing right now. But more importantly, it's an environment that provides tremendous value to the individual. It helps support surrounding communities and to spread ideas that help to support even larger surrounding communities and to teach other people how to duplicate everything that it is that we're doing in such a way that people can implement it in the way that it works for them and so that it can be adapted to individual needs and most importantly the foundations of it are for the highest good of all. The idea is that everything that we do, the individual pieces, are all moving our planet towards a sustainable future. They're helping to improve education. They're helping to improve knowledge sharing, cooperation, collaboration. And we have the potential. We have the potential to create a new golden age for humanity where everybody can experience a way of living on this, li on this planet in this lifetime that is significantly better than it is right now. And a lot of people think that's really crazy, but if you look at the idea, the, the concept of uh, something that goes viral, the idea of spreading, and the, our entire model really look de uh, in detail at what it is that we're creating. We're addressing the foundations of all of the problems of what's going on on our planet right now. The obvious things of starvation, 40,000 people starving every single day on this planet, lack of housing, there's 100 million people without a home right now on the planet, the problem with, en with a lack of energy resources, which is a quarter of the population is without, without energy right now. And then, of course, looking at uh, the quality of food, health care, crime, poverty, uh, social injustice and inequality, all of these things. And then the rising, rising levels of antidepressants right now and medication use, all of these things are interconnected. And so what we're doing is we want to create tools, tutorials, and resources to help people address those things in their life either with individual duplicable components, if that's all that people want to do, or more importantly, by demonstrating a comprehensive and complete model that can be set up and established and duplicated by people for less than what they're spending right now for homes by collaborating and cooperating and creating a new environment for the highest good of all. So without further rambling on about that, and I'll probably touch on it some more as I go into the details here, um, 
the format of these videos is always the same. I'm going to go through an overview of everything we've accomplished, our team has accomplished in the last week, and then I'll come back and I'll touch on each of the items in more depth. And if you're interested, there's a written blog that always goes along with these video blogs, and the written blog has the most recent images, has links to all the detailed and open source content that I'm talking about, much more information that I'm going to talk about here, and um, all the details that you could ever want about our project. So go to onecommunityglobal.org um, forward slash uh, one dash community dash blog if you'd like to see all of our updates and to see that that update spe specifically as well. And then you can explore our website and see details and everything we're talking about. So implementing global transformation. Let's start with education. Well, actually, I'm just going to go through the list. So in the last week, we have an Education for Life program which is open source and free shared education model for all ages. Um, we have got the time lesson plan is now in progress and we have the first piece of that. We're now working on lesson plans. First piece of that is up on the website so you can take a look at that through the blog. We're starting to develop out the page. Um, I'll talk a little bit more in depth about that when I come back around. Also for the Education for Life program, uh, we have the law and psychology research is now done for the social sciences subject outline. and. Um, that is the, we've got humanities and there's a, one other section I believe that, in social sciences that still needs to be covered and then we'll be done with that and we'll be putting that up on the website within the next few weeks. Um, Zenapini 2, Zen Aquapini 2, which is highest good food. The plants are complete up on the website now, which completes our phase one food infrastructure details on the website, uh, complete cultural considerations, descriptions, etc. is now up on the website. And we're now working on the food forest. Uh, final edits behind the scenes and we're actually starting to transport or transfer those over onto the website as open source content so people can see what those details look like. Um, also in food infrastructure, our food infrastructure now is starting to be put into CAD thanks to the great work of David Sweet. Uh, Architect is putting our food infrastructure into CAD so we can get uh, complete building plans and we're starting engineering details on that. Um, SketchUp plant reference also in food, uh, highest good food and transforming the global uh, food perception as well as quality. Our SketchUp plant reference is now done behind the scenes which is we had to add, uh, well I'll talk in detail about that when I come around but we'll just say right now that that's done. Um, Earthbag Village, so our first village model, maximally affordable, sustainable housing that's more earthquake resistant, more typhoon resistant, more flood resistant, all of these things, hurricane resistant, unbelievable uh, and super affordable structures. The Earthbag Village railings and toilet and shower dome doorways are now done in 3D and that's thanks to the great work of Devin Porter and our team. Uh, also, the Straw Bale Village, which is maximally um, expandable, modularly expandable sustainability, is now, we've got the recreation space details are now done, along with additional stairways and shared kitchen uh, details are now done in CAD, thanks to the great uh, work of Dave Wallen. And uh, also, on Sago Center, Sago Center Duplicable City Hub, in this last week, uh, we finished the second floor redesign in the kitchen as well as a bunch of touch-up details in the kitchen, a little bit of reorganization as far as um, where racks and things like that are going to go in there, and um, just some other, we finished a, a closet in there, as well as stairways. Carl Harris is working on stairways with our team, and so we've added storage under the stairway in the dining room, and then we're starting to work on the main stairways uh, going up to the second and third um, floor as well, and fourth floor. And so uh, those details are happening in 3D. And there's pictures of all this stuff. Everything that I just mentioned, the 3D pictures we've got uh, exports for the last week are up on the written blog. So if you want to see this stuff, go to the One Community website and check it out or click on the description in the YouTube video and the first link there in that description will take you to the blog relevant to this video update. Uh, also, we've got um, the, uh, we updated our logo. So last but not least, we updated our logo on the website. And um, this seems like a small thing, but it's a pretty big deal. We took out the yin and yang symbol from the logo. And I'll talk a little bit more about why we did that when I come back around. So that's our accomplishments for the last week. Let's talk about a little bit more. Um, implementing a global, global, implementing global transformation implementing a global solution, creating open source blueprints for sustainable civilizations. Wow, you know, that's it's a big task. And, um, you know, and so we've broken that task down right now 
into the areas that we're working on predominantly are all the foundations of infrastructure and then the education program because we think these are probably the most important things to start with and for us because we'll be building a complete the first complete teacher demonstration model uh, they're essential components that we need to launch on day one on the property and the goal of all this stuff is as we continue to develop it we're open source sharing every step of the process and we're creating all the infrastructure and everything necessary so that people can duplicate everything that we're doing or so that somebody could take where we are at whatever stage we're at and anything that we're doing and take that and run with it in whatever direction people want to run with it in everything from the education model to the food infrastructure the housing infrastructure to the energy infrastructure all these details to the duplicable city hub as well as the for-profit nonprofit business models all of this stuff as it continues to develop our entire back office our application for tracking time and everything that we're doing all this stuff is being open sourced as quickly as we can produce it so that anybody that wants to take what we're doing can duplicate it and and, and uh, create it in a different way if they would like to. But more importantly, so we can get more important, more people in whatever way works for you on board with what it is that we're doing and creating solutions to the world's problems. Our goal is to empower people to create their own solutions and to make it as easy as possible, as affordable as possible, and as attractive as possible so that we can forward a new era of philanthropy, a new area of humanitarianism, a new era of forward movement and change on this planet by people that are doing it because it creates a better life for them too, in a way that works for everybody. So it's not just a philanthropic endeavor, it's not just a humanitarian endeavor, but it's a personally fulfilling endeavor for people. It provides a lifestyle that they want and we want to make it easy. We want to detail out exactly how to duplicate every aspect of it and if it's not a complete lifestyle that people want, maybe it's just a component. And so uh, one of the biggest components of this is our education program. The Education for Life program is designed to put free and open source education in the hands of everybody with a computer in collaboration with a lot of the organizations out there that are already doing some amazing things like the Khan Academy is one. There's several others that have come across our desk and, uh, and we think are just amazing out there. And so what we want to do is we want to provide a community-based education model that can also be applied in a homeschooling environment or a traditional schooling environment like the Khan Academy to teach the additional pieces that maybe aren't included in traditional schooling and to provide a framework that those all of those tools could be applied within and so if you want to see what that framework looks like the time lesson plan is an example of it and now we've got we'll finish it this week so that you can see what one of these lesson plans looks like but what it is is it's a weekly theme and the weekly theme is used to teach all of the traditional subjects and so this includes math and science and English and social sciences and art and music, all of these things taught within the context of a weekly theme, which is time. And so time creates the theme, all the different subjects are in there, and we're designing a mind map for this and a strategy for being able to teach all these different subjects based on the individual educational level of your student or of your child or adult. It's made for all ages, everything from preschool all the way up into college and beyond education levels we're creating examples of how you could use this theme to teach to the individual student uh, within the context of the, of the theme of time and why would we use a theme because we want to tie it all together our idea is not just to teach social studies or just to teach science or just to teach math because we don't do that even in our traditional schools right now the idea though is to put them all together so you can teach multiple things at one time based on the student, based on the individual, and it's not a bunch of book work. Instead, it's all applicable, and it's all connected. It has a big why to why you're learning it. And so um, if you want to see how interesting this can be, and how fascinating and fun it is, and I've been doing this with my son now for a couple of years. He's five, and uh, you'd have to see what he's capable of to believe it. And, um, and it's because he doesn't know that he's learning. He just loves to learn so much. And the idea is because we always have this theme that we're working within. And so then we explore within the theme. And in doing that, we can do crazy things like algebra with a five-year-old and advanced reading and advanced science and advanced social studies and all this stuff because I'm challenging me as the educator 
with my son. And at this point, he's getting to the point where he's starting to teach me all a bunch of things uh, beyond the fact of just being a father. And so the point is, is we want to share, we're sharing an education model that will be able to be brought into any environment and be useful. And we want to revolutionize the way that people look at education. So when we talk about implementing global transformation, we see ourselves doing that in every aspect of what it is that we're producing. Every piece of one community is designed to be a, a foundational point, a launch point. And we talk about open source project launch blueprinting, which means that everything we're doing, we're creating as a blueprint, an open source and free shared blueprint for launching additional ideas and evolutions of that core theme. And so this education model is one example of that. And to create it, we have studied all of the uh, most transformational education programs out there. Regio, Waldorf, ORF, Montessori, um, the Eight Intelligences, Bloom's Taxonomy, Study Tech, all of these things that are out there, all of these educational programs that are unique and are doing it different. We looked at them and said, well, what do they have to offer? What is it that these, these programs have to offer? And how can we put all those things together in one thing? And then how can we project launch beyond that and create an education program that will be a global collaborative, a global cooperative, and it's designed to evolve and grow indefinitely with the input of the world. And so this last week, we've been, you know, we've been working on this now for a year and a half, almost two years. I mean, really, really focusing on it for a year and a half. And we've been working on it for more than two years. So, but really focusing on it for about a year and a half now. And so we've finally gotten to the point where we're putting the lesson plans together. So we've got the study of all the different teaching uh, teaching methods that are out there, and we broke that down. And then we've got the strategies of being, which are great uh, strategies of great leaders, teachers, and communicators of the world. And so that is the foundations for um, the elements for being a great teacher and a great communicator and a great leader. So, And then uh, in addition to that, we have strategies of teaching, which are the ways to put all of the different educational components together to teach multiple multiple subjects at one time and to make it interesting and fun so that there's less sitting and reading a book, virtually none, and tons of hands-on learning, the way that adults like to learn, the way that we all like to learn, like doing and seeing, and then with the book there as a reference, and okay, we have information, and now let's apply it, let's use it, and see how it applies to our real world. And so this is what the Education for Life program is all about, and the first lesson plan is up on the blog. You can see a link to that. You can even see a link to the developing page to see the formatting that's coming along with that and see what it's going to look like. And we've got 35 of these sketched out. So if they're one-week lesson plans, our goal is to create the first six months. So when we land on the one community property and we start build and we start demonstrating all this stuff and putting it into practice, we have six months of lesson plans already laid out that are applicable to any age group and multi-age classrooms and a way to apply that and then a whole process for evolving the education model as a whole and involving and involving the entire community because our goal is to demonstrate teacher demonstration models where the entire environment is a full immersion teacher learning environment that anybody can enter into experience learn something grow from being there and then take everything that we're creating out and duplicate it from the education program to the food infrastructure to the housing to the recreation malls the social architecture all this stuff putting it out for free so that people can take the pieces that they like and duplicate them and that's what we're all about it's just one big demonstration example where people can come and experience it and then take the blueprints for free and duplicate it and so this education for life program is one big piece of that and the first lesson plan is uh, about halfway done and we're gonna finish it this week and you can see where it's at right now, and you'll be able to see the finished product next week, and we're super excited about that. So also, in addition to that, this last week we finished the law and psychology research for the social sciences subject outline. And the subject outline is taking the entire subject of social sciences, the entire subject of math, the entire subject of English, and going, okay, what is the entire body of knowledge for math, science, social sciences, English? What does each one of those bodies of knowledge encompass from the basics of what you would want a preschooler to be learning in this area, all the way up to college level education. And putting it in such of a such a design, a format, we call it a molecule, because we think of it like a three-dimensional body of knowledge that we're dealing with. 
but it's on a two-dimensional piece of paper and it looks like a molecule. And the idea is that you no longer have to travel linearly through this path. If you have a kid that's great at geometry in there and they're, and they're uh, a young kid, you know, say a five-year-old like my son who loves geometry, then you can teach geometry to that kid. He's not limited until he gets into junior high school or high school to really start leveling, uh, learning high-level geometry concepts because he just takes to it. He's a natural at it. So why would I want to hold him back? And then in the process of teaching him something that he loves and he's a natural at, he's learning all these other concepts through this. And so this is what our team has been studying and our consultants, all our teacher consultants and things that we're working on is designing this on how to achieve this goal of, of true knowledge in such a way that it's so fun that kids don't realize that they're learning, that adults don't realize that they're learning, and that it's a two-directional learning process. And so the law and psychology research is fleshing out the last details of social sciences, and then we'll put that molecule together with icons and complete descriptions and everything down below, and it'll be a whole page that will be referenceable from all of the lesson plans. And so you've got all these different components of the education program that can do work as standalone individual components, just like everything that one community is. Every piece is modularly applicable. Or you can put them all together and work them together as a complete educational program, which when we once we're up and running, we'll teach people how to get licensing and all the other details that are necessary. Every single step of our process in setting up a private school will also be open source. And so for people that want to start community-based schools and things like that, we'll share our entire process of what's necessary for licensing and all of that so that people can do that. Create those tools, tutorials, and resources or partner with the organizations that offer these things so that people have easy access to it and we can start evolving the entire concept of education. Taking the entire concept of education to a completely new level. and transforming the way that people look at educating themselves and educating their kids because we can do so much better and so we are and uh, and we invite anybody to participate that would like to be part of the education program you can go to every page of the website that's uh, related to the education program and there's a suggestions link and so you just click on that link and you can send us suggestions and help us evolve it. We read every single email we get and we incorporate every single suggestion that we get and if you're somebody that really wants to be a part of it, get involved and help us um, help us to to create it. I mean, become you can join us on our weekly education calls. If you're somebody that wants to become a partner or consultant on the education program, contact us and we'll show you how to do that. So that's our big movement on the education program. Uh, moving on to food. So the Zen Aquapini number two plants are done up on the website. This is the last of the indoor growing plans. We have complete planting maps. Our botanist Michael Martin and our horticulturist Bear have done amazing work on this. Finishing the Zen Aquapini number two is the culmination of, oh man, I mean if you talk about the designs and everything, it's the culmination of three years of work getting that to where it is right now. Um, so, but it finishes all of our indoor planting stuff. So if you go to the Zenopini 2 details and you can go to the written blog and you can click on it, it'll take you right to it. You can see that we have complete planting maps. So a map of where every single plant is going to go. And we have complete planting descriptions now up on the website where we have researched six different internal growing environments, all the different plants that can be grown within that environment, drawing from the amazing plants from around the world that will thrive within that environment, all the details on where you can purchase all of these plants, so we're not just grabbing things out there like, hey, where do you go to actually purchase these plants? How much it will cost to plant these plants, descriptions of these plants, pictures of these plants, cultural considerations of these plants, planting guidelines for all these plants, and links for more information all on one page for every single thing that will be grown within our six uh, food infrastructure foundations that will be phase one of the One Community Food Infrastructure. And from an implementing global transformation perspective, the purpose of each of these structures is to be individually duplicable so that people can grow a diversity and a quality of food that far surpasses what you can get in the grocery store. And our reason for doing this is because we want to raise our standards. We want to give people an opportunity to start businesses where they can take these amazing foods that have amazing nutritional benefits that most people aren't getting because they've never heard of them, and they taste delicious, 
and we want to get people interested and they're biodiverse, so it's helping to spread biodiversity. We want to teach people how to grow these different plants and, and create an, as an engine where people, if they want to, can share them with enough food to share with their entire neighborhood, enough food to, to take it to a, a farmer's market, and if people really wanted to, enough food that they could sell it to local grocery stores if there's enough interest in buying the food. And in so doing, transforming the way that, or the way that people look at food and the, what people have to eat, transforming the quality so that people are getting really, really uh, highly nutritious food, delicious food, and we'll be sharing as we start preparing these foods all of the uh, recipes for cooking and preparations and all the plant details for maintenance and all these things and the harvest projections that we've done will then become solidified and we'll have hard numbers because we're tracking all that and we have an app that's designed and we're evolving to be able to track all that information. So this is the kind of crazy stuff that our group is doing for food. And so um, so the Zen Aquapini number two plants being completed finishes all of the indoor planting guidelines. And the Zen Aquapini is designed specifically to be a small, like the size of a, a large greenhouse, but designed and permitted so that people, most people will be able to build it in their backyard if they want to, instead of a greenhouse. It's lower profile, meaning it takes up less of your skyline. It'll provide a beautiful zen environment inside where people can go and hang out. You'd want to go and uh, have a cup of tea or relax in there, play cards, read a book, that kind of an environment. Invite your friends over to see it so the model spreads. And while you're in there, you can pick food that you would never be able to grow if it weren't for the fact that we're sharing and teaching people how to do this and with this internal environment in certain places in the world. Because it's designed so that areas that are way too cold to produce a tropical environment will be able to produce a tropical environment with this structure in some place like Montana or Canada or Alaska, you know, so Siberia. <laughs> so this is the idea, is to, to create those types of environments and then give people a foundation to build off of and evolve from there and work as a global collaborative and cooperative to share even more and more ideas, what works, what doesn't work, and to really, you know, launch this idea. So along with that, that's all of our indoor stuff. So now that we've finished our indoor stuff, we're starting to do all the food forest stuff, um, the final behind the scenes edits on the food forest, and we're starting to move all of those plants over onto the website. So the indoor planting guide is, oh man, it's over, over 300 plants. And the outdoor planting guide is another 290 plus plants, might be over 300 plants now. And so we've done all the research on those plants, what will grow in our area, and you want to teach people how to create a food forest. And if you don't know what a food forest is, it's teaching people how to grow a symbiotic relationship of plants that once established will run autonomously forever. You would have to literally go in and cut it down like a rainforest to try and wipe it out. And so the idea is that it will produce food indefinitely. You know, And if you really are hands-on with it, it will produce a lot of food. You know, and so our food forest infrastructure uh, is now being put together on the website too. And so you'll start seeing me report on how many plants we move over over the next weeks, how many plants we've moved over every week as we finish the edits there. We get them over, we get them finalized on the on edited on a separate page, and then we move them over to the final page. And so you're going to see that whole food forest page expand. And all this stuff is part of our open source botanical garden model. So if you want to see that, onecommunityglobal.org forward slash botanical garden. And you'll see that what we're open sourcing is how to be true stewards of plants, how to keep detailed records in the way that that is in accordance with the national guidelines for this kind of stuff so that you can share this information with us and with other botanical gardens to help promote food diversity. You know, the four types of apples that we see in the grocery store are just the four apples that work for grocery stores. There are, there's, we've got over 50 different apple trees from our partners at Century Farm Orchards that will be demonstrating that all have unique qualities and different reasons why you would grow those, you know, for cider or for frying or for baking or for just eating or for storage, all these kinds of things. People don't realize this. And so we want to get people back in tune with this because it's an opportunity to change the way people think about food to get us in touch with food in a way that our ancestors were in touch with food and way, way beyond because our ancestors didn't have access to the global knowledge base of what is available. And that's what we're here to do, is to start waking people up to that idea and to share the people that are already awake to this idea, the amazing work that they're doing. 
and to help this idea spread and to get the mainstream public involved in this stuff so that people that want to build a Zen aquapini in their backyard and produce all these amazing fruits and vegetables plus aquaculture on top of that and help promote diversity and, and sharing these foods and getting people going, wow, that's really amazing, can do that. And so um, you're going to see our food force starting to develop to the same level of detail that we've done for all of our indoor planting stuff. And it's uh, an amazing amount of work, hundreds and hundreds of hours of work that's gone into all this stuff. And so it's starting to become visible. Additionally, as part of our open source guide, I said that we've got our SketchUp plant reference done. What the heck is that? If you haven't watched our other videos, um, we've created a plant reference because of all the stuff that we're doing, we're putting into 3D so that people can see it, so they can walk around in it, they can take a look at what it looks like. And this is what all these 3D pictures on our written blogs are. You can see them starting to evolve and all this stuff. And so the, um, the SketchUp plant reference is all about, uh, we went and we looked at hundreds, I mean hundreds and hundreds of plants on SketchUp. And some of them are really great and some of them are not good at all. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to find as many 3D models because they look so much better as we could. And then because there are so many of the common plants and so few of the not so common plants, we wanted to create a database using our botanist Michael, uh, Michael Martin's amazing knowledge to be able to look at these plants and say, hey, you know, from a distance you wouldn't know that plant from this plant because he's got decades of experience studying this kind of stuff. He's like, yeah, if you weren't looking at the leaf, you know, in a 3D model like this, that plant could be substituted for this plant, this plant, this plant, this plant. And so what we've done is we've created a complete SketchUp plant reference database because we needed it for what we're doing. And we realized that it would really be something valuable to provide for other people as well. And so if you want, you can actually uh, see if you go to the written blog, you can click on it and you actually go visit the Google Doc of the unedited details, which is already accessible and open source on the web now. So people can search that document. And if you type in a, a plant like breadfruit or something like that, if there is a tree that looks like it, because I know there's no breadfruit tree in SketchUp, if there's a tree that could be substituted for that, it's in there. And we've labeled that. And so what we've done is we've included pictures and links to the SketchUp models where you can download that. And this last week, we finished all the extra plants. Like, hey, it looks like this. It could be substituted for this, 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 and this, including the Latin names. So they're universal names that, that, can, that every country would understand, as well as the common names. So people looking for common names will be able to find that. It's an amazing resource. It's, uh, got, we think it's going to be super valuable and helpful for people that are doing landscaping. And it's going to be a long-term tool for us and others using our open source blueprints to be able to find the plants that they want to create 3D environments to demonstrate to people what it is that they're going to build and what it is that we're going to build. And you're going to be seeing those plants now added into a lot of our models as we're starting to develop the landscaping and things like that. And so um, we're super excited to have those details up. So also on food infrastructure, we're now putting all of our food infrastructure, so all six of those houses are all the six of those aquapinis and wallapinis are now going into CAD. And this is being done thanks to the amazing work of David Sweet, is doing uh, architect, is doing all this work for us, converting all that stuff over to CAD. And we just brought on a new engineering partner also. So we're looking at uh, the details of the roof because as you know, we've been doing weeks and weeks and weeks of plastic research. And so we're reaching out, we're building our partnership team bigger and bigger and bigger to design these structures uh, to make them as affordable as possible, to make them permitted and to meet code so that people can build them wherever they need to. Um, and a lot of people will be able to build these things without permitting them, but we, we are permitting everything. And then also um, to make them you know, structurally sound and to make them so that they can be duplicated uh, virtually anywhere and provide an internal environment that can grow all the amazing food and everything that we've talked about in six different environments that we're developing. And so, um, so all this stuff is now moving into CAD thanks to David Sweet. And so up on the written blog, you can see a side-by-side -side picture of the original drawings, thanks to Douglas Stenhouse, architect and watercolor artist. You see those original drawings, and then you can see David Sweet's work side-by-side -side with that as it's developing in CAD. And so you're gonna see all of our stuff on the website starting to update from the drawings to the actual CAD, and then we're moving to full building plans, and we'll open source everything as we produce it, as we do. And so you can see our open source and free shared uh, designs up on the website on the written blog. Um, on housing, so, uh, and back to food, just before I move on from food, I just want to say, so global transformation, not only are we looking at transforming how people look at food and what people are eating, but we talk about addressing global health 
you know, and food diversity, nutritional diversity is a big, big part of that. You know, locally grown food has been shown to have higher nutritional density than food that's transported long distances because when it's transported long distances, it starts to oxidize and break down. You know, so being able to pick an apple that's ripe right off a plant and eat it on the spot has a lot more nutritional density to it than something that's been sitting on the shelf for a long time. You know, or that was picked before it was ripe and then has been transported to market and then ripened without being connected to the tree. You know, so when we talk about implementing global transformation and addressing everything, this is one of those ways that we're looking at healthcare and addressing the foundations of what's going on with our society and others as far as health is going. Then saying, hey, let's look at the foundation of that. What is our nutrition? And then what is the water that we're drinking? What is the air that we're breathing? What is the environment that we're living in as far as stress is concerned? Are people happy? You know, do they have enriching, fulfilled lives that makes them want to jump out of bed and know that they're contributing something? Because those things have been demonstrated to be uh, possibly even more impactful on people's health even than, than something like uh, you know what they're what they're eating, although that's super super important. But stress has been shown to be hugely detrimental to people's health, and so we're addressing all of those things simultaneously. We're looking at that, and how do you look at those things together? You know, and then how do you provide enough food so that you know people that are in a way that people that can be duplicated in areas where people are starving? And how do you create a model? so that it's not a philanthropic endeavor where people are paying money to go build food infrastructure over there, but you're providing a whole lifestyle so that it makes sense for people to pool their money together and go build themselves a home over there where they're living full-time and helping to spread and share the teacher demonstration model with surrounding community who welcomes them because they're providing value and then they're they're welcoming the help that that, that the value that that community would provide them and so it creates this win-win cooperative, collaborative environment that people can come and visit and help to support those folks by visiting like a tourist destination. And if they like what they see, they can then take what they see and go duplicate it other places, spreading this idea, sharing this. And there's so many different layers to it that go so far beyond just food, energy, housing, education, for-profit, non-profit business models, stewardship, the highest good society model that we're talking about and that we've designed on our website and detailed out has so many different layers in it. And the whole idea is to teach people what it looks like to live for the highest good of all and how you can do that. And the, the whole, everything from a governing structure to, to the recreational model and social architecture and how all this stuff can be put together so people have a foundation to build off of. And they don't have to do it our way. You know, we're just demonstrating a way, you know, and then and the foundations of how we do it and everything that we learn in the process so that people can take what they like and discard what they don't like and um, and evolve it in lots of different ways so that people have options. And we want to lead the global cooperative and collaborative in doing that. And so the food infrastructure is addressing the health. And then the bigger picture, though, is looking at human psychology and, uh, you know, and emotional health as well as physical health. So. It's a very, very um, comprehensive approach. We talk about the solution to everything. We're not kidding. So on to housing, um, the, you know, the first village model that we're building, there's seven different village models, is, and we talk about highest good housing, is the most affordable, and that is the Earthbag Village. And so this last week, we got the Earthbag Village in 3D. We've got, thanks to the help of Devin Porter, um, we got the railings in, we got the final framing around the toilet and shower dome doorways are done. All of this stuff, excuse me, is designed to spec. And so the idea is, um, you know, looking at the drawings and the designs and everything that we've done and all of our collaborative partners who've done earth building and helped us to bring all this stuff together. We're, we're creating it all in 3D and then as we actually build it, we will open source share every single aspect of what we do, tools, tutorials, and resources do-it-yourself guides that will be usable by everybody in the world that's already doing this kind of building as well as anybody who's never even heard of this kind of building to get involved and to get to start doing it to start spreading this kind of housing which is affordable it's durable these houses will last for hundreds of years I mean they're virtually indestructible they're more affordable than than traditional homes they're beautiful they're artistic and they're things that people can build without heavy machinery 
Now, that regular people with average means can duplicate. And so for third world countries, it's an option to go into some place like the Philippines that's been devastated and to rebuild their infrastructure with something that's more sustainable and more durable and will stand up to, to this happening again better than what they had before. And so and to help and to help convince the mainstream public that this would be something worth investing in for themselves and taking these resources into the areas that need them most and starting to spread the ideas, but not just with housing, food infrastructure, energy infrastructure, education models, highest good for-profit, non-profit business models. So it's not just going in and saying, hey, we're going to set up homes for these folks. Let's go in and establish complete sustainable civilizations as a model for teaching them to teach others how to establish a sustainable civilization. Let's spread this idea like wildfire across the world and watch it evolve. That's the open source platform that we're creating. It's like the Android phone. You know, you put it out there open source and you allow people to plug into it. But that's for coders and a very specific population. We want to create an open source platform for the mainstream public that doesn't know anything about this kind of stuff. So that anybody could plug into it and start using it. And it's a lot more desirable than a phone because it's things that people really, really need that leads to better education, that leads to a better quality of life, that leads to better food, better health, less crime, less poverty, more time with your family, more time with your friends, more time doing the things that you want to do, more personal enrichment and growth, more cooperation, collaboration. All the things that people value most in this world. Somebody said the other day, it's not money that people want, it's the things that money can buy that people want. What if we provided that in a way that was duplicable? And we taught people how to do that and how to cooperate and collaborate and how when working together for the highest good of all, they can provide more of the things that they buy with money for themselves and for their friends at less expense through resource-based economy and through sharing and cooperating and collaborating, and by bringing the, the, the cost of living significantly down for people and providing an environment that people will pay to visit. And then we will teach them how to duplicate it so they don't have to pay anymore, so that they can share it for other people that will pay to come and visit. Supporting the lifestyle and spreading the model, all of the aspects of the model. Global transformation. So the Earthbag Village railings, toilet, and shower dome doorways are now done. And uh, in 3D, we're moving forward now, uh, starting to work on the last landscaping, which will tie into all of the uh, all of the different plants and stuff that we've identified. We've done a little bit of landscaping. We've got to do a lot more because the additional landscaping details that we're putting in there are going to eliminate the need for railings that are currently not in the picture right now because we know we're doing this landscaping. So as we design it, we'll show people how you know to bring the cost down and building a complete village model where you could house 100 plus people on one acre of land and then surround yourself by beautiful forest land and create these food forests and, and a, a model where you have true stewardship of the land where you're creating abundance for everything around you through these food forests. The food forests produce enough food to feed people, but they also feed everything else that lives there too. So you're supporting an entire ecosystem. You're bringing an entire ecosystem into being, and then if you're doing it using our open source botanical mar garden model, you're bringing an ecosystem into being that you can also then share the knowledge that that ecosystem provides on every single plant that's growing within that, and then the plants that are maximally adapted, et cetera, you can start sharing those seeds and sharing that information with more and more people so that now we have a global cooperative and collaborative working on improving biodiversity and the food of the entire planet through food forests, through sustainable environments that once built will operate on their own. Wow. So also, um, Straw Bale Village. So the Earthbag Village is maximally affordable living. The Straw Bale Village is maximally um, uh, modularly expandable. Uh, living and so straw bale construction is another sustainable model if you have access to straw everybody has access to earth so earth bag building can be done anywhere that's why we're starting with that second one is a straw bale village and more structures that will last forever i mean these things last forever they're just so much more durable than how people are living right now and so the straw bale village thanks to the great work of dave wallen 
is uh, moving forward in CAD. And in this last week, we added recreation space details. There's a central recreation space. You can see pictures on the blog, or you can go to the, uh, the, the page related to this and see pictures of that, uh, see details there as well, the complete plans and everything that we're providing for this. Uh, if you go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash straw bale village, you'll see all those details. Uh, and so the recreation space details have been added in, additional stairways have been added in, and more details to the shared kitchen are done. We got a picture up on the blog, so you can see all that. Um, the Straw Bale Village is a double torus design that is designed such that you could build a piece of it, and then you could continue to add on to it as a community village or city expands. And as you add on to it, it creates a better space for growing more food and more water collection. And so the benefits of the village expand as the village expands. So instead of encroaching upon the surrounding areas and just creating urban sprawl, instead the idea is that it's more compact living. And as you build, you become you create more compact food production, etc. It's expanding and getting bigger, but the idea is that it's small and that as it grows, it creates a more protected environment for food. And because there's shared kitchen space and shared uh, laundry space and things like that, the use of resources is ridiculously lower than traditional living. And then the social and recreational spaces that are built into that, as well as the food infrastructure, which doubles as recreational space as well, all that stuff is designed to provide an environment that is far superior to what most people are experiencing right now as far as their recreational space. I mean, really, really beautiful spaces where people can go and then they've got private spaces as well but these shared communal spaces are the resources of you know 20 30 40 50 people put into creating a beautiful space how much better do you think that is going to be than a couple that buys a house and decides to dress up their living room now you've got 30 40 people putting together their resources and saying hey let's create an environment that we're all going to share what's that look like and so this is what the Straw Bale Village is all about. The Earthback Village also has some has the same type of model built into it in that there's the tropical atrium in the center of that, and that's purpose for that as well. And all the food infrastructures have recreational spaces built into them. And then you have the Sago Center as well. So the Sago Center in this last week also evolved. Um, that The Sago Center is the central hub for the complete community and village uh, teacher demonstration model that is one community. And so it's a duplicable city center. And so in this land, the whole purpose of it is that you could build any of the village models around this. And this could be the central hub for people that really are going to be, build a very large village where they're going to want to feed 150, 200 people at one time, do laundry for 300 people in one building. So big recreational spaces, big congregation spaces, and it would be an initial uh, starting point for somebody who wanted to invest more money in really creating infrastructure, landing someplace unique and interesting. That's what the Sego Center is all about. And so it's really beautiful. Lead Platinum Certified is what we're going for with that, and we know we're going to get it. And so in this last week, um, we have added in the second floor redesign. Uh, we finished up kitchen details, which we had to do some tweaks on kitchen counters, and there were some other like water details that had to be done, like with the water. Anyway, so little details were fixed in there. We moved around some racks in there. We put in a cleaning closet. We put in the details. You can see pictures of all this stuff on the blog. Um, we put in the cleaning closet with the mop mop sink down below, and you know just designing out the details so people can see uh, the space that's designed to feed 150 to 200 people at a time and to be a recreational space for even more than that. And so um, in addition to that, when we did the, the ground floor of the dining room, we also needed to redef redesign the second floor then to match that ground floor. And so that whole second floor has been redesigned. And then thanks to the work of Carl Harris, uh, we've also added stairway storage underneath like a closet, like a broom closet underneath the stairways that go up into that second floor. And now we're starting to do all the work on the stairways, uh, the main stairway that'll take you to the second, third, and fourth floor on that sustainable building as well. And so our idea with all this stuff is this duplicable city center, we're putting it out there for free. When all these designs are done, when the CAD designs are done, when the 3D SketchUp designs are all done, then we'll put it into 3D Max as well, and we'll probably have it in Revit also. We'll put all this stuff out there for free, so that, and we built the, the relationship with uh, the Dome provider, with Dome Incorporated as well, so that people will be able to buy everything that they need to duplicate this and the plans will all be free. So everything that we're learning going through all the permitting and all the details, everything we're gonna do, we'll put it out there for free and then people who wanna modify that can take that and modify it however they want and all that money and all those resources and the thousands of hours 
that we have put into this are already done. And so people can then evolve from beyond that. And because the infrastructure is sustainable and, and the foundations of it are super, super ecological and they save people money, they save resources, and they're great for the planet and they're great for people's pocketbooks, then people, you know, it's a, it's a great thing to duplicate. You know, it's like a, it's a city center in a box that people will be able to, to, to duplicate for a fraction of the cost if, of what they would have to do if they were going to design it themselves. And they can take that money that they save and put it into evolving it and changing it. And if they're on board with the highest good for all philosophy and want to be a part of the global cooperative, want to be a part of the global collaborative, we're here to be there and to help support that and share that information and evolve it so more and more plans become available. And so what we want to do is we want to make this like the starting point for new civilizations, for a new way of living and a new style of living that's super sustainable. It's super beautiful. It's fantastic to live in and it's large open spaces and change the way that people look at at living, implementing global transformation, We're making a dent. We want to change the way that people look at living, and then uh, and and share this in such a way that you know ideas like the Venus Project and and this idea of creating a complete world that works for everybody, so that mainstream interests will get involved in that, and people can say, "Wow, we should build you know even more expensive versions of this. You know, we should invest." millions and millions of dollars in this instead of hundreds of thousands of dollars in this. We should invest billions of dollars and build really, you know, massive sustainable cities because this is a more pleasurable way to live. And I am somebody that would want to vote for that. I would want to put my money into that, etc. And so creating a shift in consciousness for people that want that or for people who don't, they keep doing what they want to do. We want to provide an option though for something else. And so that's the Sago Center uh, progress that we've made in the last um, month, super, super cool, or sorry, last month, in the last week, was adding those details in, and so in this next week, we're now starting to put in uh, the custom tables that go in there, the kind of special designs so that you can seat maximum people in there, and then also um, all of the stairway, the rest of the stairway details is what we're working on behind the scenes. Um, and last but not least, I said that we uh, updated our logo. Why do we update our logo? Well, and it's not a big update, but it is a big update. We dropped the yin and yang symbol from the One Community logo. Uh, we got feedback from somebody that I really appreciated, which basically just said, hey, for people that don't understand the yin and yang, it, it's a religious symbol. I'm like, yin and yang is not a religion, it's a philosophy. And he's like, I know that, but I know what yin and yang stands for. He's like, other people might not know that. And if you've got a yin and yang symbol out there, you know, you're, you're, it's front and center on your website, and if you want to really appeal to the maximum number of people, you know, anything that could, that somebody might turn somebody off just because they don't know what it means, you might want to consider that. And so that was about a 30-minute conversation that instantly resonated with uh, who we are and our desire to operate for the highest good of all and to not turn anybody off on our project if we can avoid it. And because we want to share models that people, as many people as possible, can access and take advantage and use in the way that works for them. And so if they're turned off because they think that we have some sort of religious association or something like that, that's really not productive. And so we removed the yin and yang symbol from our logo and, um, and updated that on all our websites and everywhere that it matters. It's probably still in some other places, but you know, for all intents and purposes, we updated on our, on our Facebook page and we've updated on our website and, and all our websites. And so, um, yeah, just letting go of that and moving forward because we really want to um, respect people's differing views and make sure that people don't think that we're um, dogmatic or ideological about anything because we really aren't. The whole organization, everything that we do is designed to be duplicated in the way that works for people and our way of approaching it um, for people that may not have ever heard of one community is to sh clearly share who we are and what we're creating so if people want to get involved specifically with our organization, they know exactly what we're doing and why we're creating what we're creating and how we're creating it so they can get involved and, and, and feel confident that they know what it is that we're doing. And if there's something that we're doing that they don't like, then they can take everything that we're doing because it's open source and it's free shared and do it differently. And this is a big part of our implementing global transformation is, is, is doing it in a way that's transparent, um, that is totally hands-on and that's open to everybody so there's options for participation. We're always looking for people uh, who would like to join us either as pioneers, which will be the people that will move to the property and build all of one community and open source share this stuff 
indefinitely with us. And then also uh, people that might want to just join us as partners or consultants so and, and become a part of the team but aren't interested in moving onto the property. Or there's also a satellite pioneer or sorry, a satellite member option, which are the people that want to join our team and be a part of the weekly calls and be a part of everything that's happening behind the scenes, just like our pioneer members, but they're interested in, in starting a version of one community, whatever they want to call it, somewhere else. And they just want to be a part of all the back office stuff and see how we operate as an organization and contribute to making history with us. And so, so there's always that option too. And so, um, so yeah, if you're somebody that would like to join us, that's our open invitation. Um, wrapping up now saying thanks as always for listening to, uh, listening to me talk here for an hour and uh, for following our progress. Thanks for all the great emails and everything that we get. You can follow us on Twitter, One Community. Uh, Twitter is uh, One Community Org. Facebook is One Community Fans or One Community Updates are our two Facebook pages. And then we're on all the other social media sites as well, so you can check us out there. Also, connect through our website. And um, the number one way that if anybody would like to help us, the number one way that you could help us right now, people ask all the time, well, what would it take to get you guys building sooner? And I always say the same thing. It takes one person. We're really looking for that investor or group of investors that would like to help us get the property off the market. That's the main thing. The main next step for us is getting the property that we've been working with the county and um, designing everything that we're doing around for the last three years. It's still waiting for us to get that off the property. If you want to check out what it is that we need to do that, onecommunityglobal.org forward slash funding is what we're looking for. Share that page. If you know somebody um, that could help us out, have them contact us. We're always looking for the people that want to contact us. Uh, share what it is that we're doing. Share it on Facebook. Share it in your social media groups because um, you know sharing this stuff is probably the easiest way to get it out and you don't know who you know. And we're just looking for that one person that could take us to the next level. In the meantime, we will keep on keeping on and uh, you can see what we do this week in video blog number 39, which will be next week. So thanks for checking us out. Times two, if you want to hear an abbreviated version of this, uh, you can go check out the first one. We'll leave it up. Uh, and I'm going to post this one, though, and this will be the one that's on the blog and has the timestamp. We'll add timestamps to this for everything I talked to talked about. So for people who don't want to listen to a whole hour, they can just jump to the parts that they're most interested in using that timestamp. And we do that every week, too. So thanks, as always, for following our work. Thanks for all your support. And uh, until next week, have yourself a great week.